Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mitch. Good Wednesday evening to you all. I hope you guys are doing well out there and certainly had yourselves a fantastic day and I hope you all are having a great week out there so far. Thank you all for tuning in this evening. I think you'll be glad you did as I'm going to do something that's a little bit out of character for what I typically do on this channel. Now, it's not a bad thing. We're not going to get too crazy. That's not what I'm talking about, but we're going to discuss the long range and uh, kind of give my thoughts on what I think could potentially happen. I'm going to take my shot here, and uh, you guys can come back and call me out if I'm wrong. That's cool. Uh, I think part of doing what I do is not just looking at model guides and saying and telling you guys what it shows, but also giving my own opinion. And uh, typically, I keep that in the short, short to medium range. But I'm going to take my shot at the long range, and I'm, not, I'm I'm talking about I'm not talking about like November or December or anything like that. I'm talking about maybe the end of the first week of October, maybe second week of October, we're going to discuss some thoughts on a big time pattern change and what I potentially, what I think potentially could happen. So we'll leave it at that. If you folks have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. If you guys got anything that I can pray about or pray over, as always, please put those in the comments below. That gives me an opportunity to pray over it and it gives others an opportunity to do so too. Now I know I told you guys I talk about the tropics tonight. Uh, stay tuned, we will talk about the tropics. But there's been some switch ups out there with model guidance, and I want to don't want to get too detailed on something that's going to continue to switch up. We need to figure some things out out there in the tropics. So stay tuned for tomorrow morning's video, and I might make a video tomorrow evening getting much more detailed on it. So with that being said, let's get going. So what you see on your screen, you might not like it right off the dot if you're a cold weather fan. This is the 6 to 10 day temperature outlook. This basically is valid from October 3rd to the 7th. So what I can tell you guys is I think we're going to potentially waste at minimum the first uh, maybe couple to several days of October, which for me, October is one of my uh, most favorite months of the year. I think it's an awesome month, and it's not just because my birthday is in the month of October, but because, I mean, let, let's be real. October is a typically literally a beautiful month with the fall foliage. It's the changing of the seasons, and it's typically just an awesome month. I just, I just love October, but it looks like we're going to start off much warmer than average. I mean, you have a, I mean, what, what is that? That is pretty much a, an, an 80 to 90 percent chance of above average temperatures here in the Ohio Valley, the Great Lakes region between the 3rd and the 7th. I mean, it doesn't get much better outside of this area. So the central and eastern U.S., we'll just say it like this, there's a good chance it's going to be above average temperature wise. And this was updated today, the 27th. And we could sit here and look at the, uh, what is it, the 10 to 4, the 8, to, I think it's 8 to 14 day outlook also. Um, but honestly, I mean, it really doesn't matter at this point. I can show it to you guys really quick. It shows pretty much the same thing. 8 to 14 day temperature outlook. They're pretty confident. Basically, the first one third of October is going to be above average. But I can tell you, this time frame right here, I think it's going to change some. I do. And I'll tell you why here in a second. We're going to lead up to that. What we do know is in the short to medium term, it's going to be pretty warm. This is temperatures for tomorrow. I'm not going to stay very long on this. I mean, it's very warm across the south, central, and the central plains, 90s. I mean, it's this is still above average up here in kind of the northern plains, the north central U.S., the Great Lakes region, the Midwest. Even though it's much more pleasant if you compare it to like Kansas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, and Texas, that's still a little above average for you folks. And it warms up even more Friday. Then we get into Saturday, and you're starting to get into the 80s in the UP of Michigan, a place where this time of the year, I believe the average highs in most areas in the UP this time of the year is in the 60s. Correct me if I'm wrong for you folks up there. I feel like my buddy Steven told me uh, his average high in his, in his neck of the woods in the UP of Michigan is uh, like 63, 64 right now. Um, but I mean, this is above average for you folks in the northern portion of the lower 48. We get into October 1st. I mean, it's well into the 80s into the Dakotas. I mean, it's getting up to almost 85 in Minneapolis to kick off your October. You get into October 2nd, still warm. October 3rd, October 4th, and this is as far out as the National Weather Service goes. And you start to see it begins to get beat down. This ridge gets beat down. It shifts a little bit further east and it begins to cool back down, but still above average. Now, you switch it to the eastern U.S., the only thing that's saving the eastern U.S. right now is some cold air damming. A high pressure is funneling in 
Um, basically, this northeast wind, and it's keeping the Carolinas, even areas of Georgia, certainly points northeast um, nice and cool, even below average for certain areas. Okay, but as we get into Friday, the heat begins to build back in. And look at it beginning to creep into the deep south. I mean, Nashville, you're starting to creep to 90 degrees. Uh, Memphis, Little Rock, you're certainly in the low 90s. Um, I mean, you're, you're flirting with 80 degrees in Chicago, October 1st. I mean, it's even starting to get warm in Columbus, Cincinnati, Detroit. I mean, getting into the low 80s into, De into Michigan. And I mean, it's even starting to warm up into the northeast. I mean, upper 70s, low 80s for certain areas, October 2nd, October 3rd. You're just widespread 80s across the southeast. Nothing unbearable, but definitely dealing with the 80s. Then we get into October 4th. Um, I can tell you, I think the worst of the heat stays away from the southeast um, and, and maybe the extreme areas of the eastern U.S., but still above average. Now, this only goes out to October 4th. So let's go on and talk about something that I'm seeing out there. So this video is going to help a lot of folks who are wondering when they're next well, when they're first, frost or freezes. I've had that question a couple times too. I might can give you a time frame. So what you see on the screen is basically ridging and troughing. It's the same thing when we discuss hurricane season, right? Like when we were talking about hurricane lead to death and we were talking about how the steering currents go around high pressure and low pressure. Well, we're not going to talk about steering currents here. We're going to talk about it as high pressure and low pressure and what it means and in this case, ridging, which typically means if you're under in, under the influence of ridging, you're typically dealing with above average temperatures. If you're dealing with a trough in place with an associated cold front, you're typically dealing with cooler than average temperatures or some kind of storm system. And that's in the blue, the trough, the ridge is in the orange and the in the reds that you see on your screen. So what we do know is below average temperatures with consistent troughing will stay over the west. You see this big um, upper trough right here over the western U.S. as we're getting into October 2nd. So this is the morning of October 2nd. You see this big ridge built all the way up into Canada, not just the lower 48 Canada. So this is keeping the central and the eastern areas of the U.S. warmer than average. I don't have my clicker up, but we're just going to roll without it. Okay, what I want you to watch is, watch this little lobe right here, this little area in blue. All right, it looks like some cold air gets opened up from Canada. I wouldn't call it a cross-polar flow or anything like that, but it's an interesting little piece of energy that digs down, this big-time trough that digs down out of Canada. And it almost looks like, like somewhat of a cross-polar flow. You get a tall ridging over the, over the areas of the Pacific, okay? And then you get, you're getting ridging over areas of Canada, and then between it, you get a dislodgement of cold air. This comes down and drops down into the, the northern plains, northern Rockies. And this is about a week out from today. Okay, so this is around October 5th. So this gets, this basically digs down into the lower 48. You just watch this. I know it looks very small on your screen compared to everything else. It basically kind of dives down between two uh, pretty, pretty heightened ridge, ridges uh, to its left and to its right. So to its west and to its east. So this trough digs down here, and it's going to have an associated cold front. And I think that this could be a legitimate signal for a legit cold front, a uh, pattern-changing cold front. This digs down, and uh, the GFS is really liking the idea of a big-time trough setting up somewhere over the eastern to eastern U.S. sometime, uh, you know, about 8 to 10 days from now. Okay, you see this big blob of, of um, a blue right here? This is a big time trough digging down with an associated cold front. Okay, this would bring below average temperatures down into the low of 48. Now, is this going to happen? It's 234 hours out. Um, we compare this with other model guidance. Okay, and, and I can tell you the GFS is just going wild with this. It has the last two model runs. It digs it all the way down and keeps it over the eastern U.S. and actually reinforces it. And you pretty much just get a massive trough over the east and a huge ridge that's building way up in almost Alaska over the western U.S. So we love this look for the eastern U.S. in the winter. So what about the European? Much more reliable model when it comes to 
figuring this kind of stuff like like this out. Like I said, you know, you got the ridge over the eastern and, and, and central U.S. Here comes that little blue feature right here. That's our trough. This begins to dig down. Now remember, the euro only goes 10 days out, 240 hours out. And here it comes. It digs it down. It digs it a little bit further west. So areas further in the western U.S., like the Rockies and just, just the western U.S. in general, gets more impacts from this trough. Now, you're still dealing with the pesky ridge, okay, over the eastern U.S. If this digs down too far west, okay, and just digs too much, this is going to cause the ridge to flex over the eastern U.S., okay? But it looks like this is on the move. You see these last little motions right here? It looks like it's on the move east. So if I would say if this was to keep going, it, it would seem like that this would be heading to the central even the eastern U.S. eventually, as we get more so past the day 10 time frame. What does the Canadian show? Pretty much the same thing and around October 1st, October 2nd, and then it shows that trough that shows up over Canada and then digs down, digs down into the northern Rockies, the northern plains, and uh, the Canadian looks like almost a full-fledged cross-polar flow where, when I say polar, guys, I don't mean we're about to have an Arctic front that's going to bring sub freezing temperatures all the way to the Gulf of Mexico. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that, you know, this is bringing out true cold air all the way from Canada, uh, right across Canada, all the way down to the lower 48. And this off the Canadian model, which isn't the most reliable model out there, um, but it shows a massive cold front digging down the trough. Okay. Massive boundary. Okay. So, you got the GFS, the European, and the Canadian model to both show this. What I will tell you guys is the GFS is not a great model with long range. One thing that it can do decently well is sniff out a pattern change in the long range. Could it be wrong? Absolutely. But it can sniff out a pattern change, a pattern change pretty decently. Um, that's about as good as you're going to get from the GFS in the long range. So what does this mean as far as temperatures? I don't know what this means for your backyard, backyard on October 8th, guys. We don't know. What I can tell you is we start out Tuesday afternoon, October the 3rd next week. Okay, first Tuesday of October. It's blistering hot. I mean, it's still hot across the Mississippi Valley. All right, and here it comes. All right, here comes on the GFS. Look at it. All right. You can see the cold front on the map next Thursday, October 5th. Cold front is showing up, big time temperature boundary. And then look at that. Okay, bang. Look at the big difference here. Look, and um, for example, and uh, let, let's say Oklahoma, you're, you're, you're getting in the 70s and 80s one day. And then you're getting into Friday, you're only in the 50s and 60s. Okay, this is of next week. Now, this isn't a forecast. This is just what it looks like as far as surface temperatures well, what I just showed you as far as trough and ridging, okay? Now, this eventually even makes it all the way down to the southeast, okay? Now, look, you got some 30 showing up in the Mississippi Valley, even some sub-freezing temperatures showing up, okay? This could be some folks' first frost, some freeze, if this was to happen. And then, look, one last warm day. Okay, into the southeast, and then this front makes it all the way to the southeast. And uh, what the GFS does is this turns this turns this to turns this into a full fledged like cut off upper low, and spins this around like the central portion of the country around the Great Lakes region. And I mean, look at this cold air. Um, next like two Monday mornings from now. I mean, this is getting like past way past ten days at this point. Okay, but it does show basically the Ohio Valley, the eastern U.S., the central U.S. cooling down because of this associated cold front. Now, what about the European? European only goes out 10 days, which is good. It only needs to go out 10 days because anything past that is super unreliable. Getting in the next Wednesday, October 4th, it's, it's very hot for October standards down here in the south, central, and Gulf Coast of the U.S. But if you go all the way out to the final couple frames of the Euro, Look at this cold air breaking out across the Rockies. Frigid air for early October starting to break loose. And remember, I showed you 
on the European, that trough was digging further west, but there's still a big time boundary shooting across. For example, these are high temp around high temperatures based off the Euro next Friday evening. Um, you know, one part of the state of Nebraska is in the 30s, the others is in the 70s. So it shows a pretty stout temperature boundary with a cold front also. All right, and the Canadian does too. Last thing I'll mention is this. Typically, if this was to happen, um, you typically have a pretty gnarly storm system associated with these really strong cold fronts. So if you look at something like the GFS, here it comes. You can see a lot of blue showing up on your screen. Here it comes. This, this wants to dive almost like a blue northern down the front range of um, uh, the, the Rockies here in Colorado, give areas like Denver some snow. And here it comes. You know, it wants to dive this cut off upper low and spiral it down into the north central U.S. And look at this. It brings its own massive pocket of cold air, has like a low pressure kind of spinning around it. It's pretty wild. If something like this would, was to happen, this would bring some early season snow for the mountains of the Apps, for the Appalachian Mountains. But this is so far out. This is getting into the uh, like, like almost mid-October at this point. And it's the same thing with the Euro, though, guys, too. Now, the Euro on Tropical Tidbits only shows all moisture as rain, but this would be falling as snow. The European wants to drop a pretty substantial, the first substantial winter storm of the year, uh, of the fall season, across the northern Rockies, okay, with this associated Arctic front that would move through. So, um, my bet is, and I just rocked my computer screen a little bit there, my bet is is that something interesting is going to happen, I would say, between October 6th and October 10th. Now, you can hold me to that if y'all want. The cows come home. That's cool. But I'm watching that time frame for something weird to happen. Is it going to be just a pattern-changing cold front? Are we going to have our first significant winter storm of the year for the Rockies? Or we're going to have a, we could have a severe weather event associated with with this cold front, a lot of times with very strong cold fronts, we get a lot of severe weather. Um, I think something wonky is going to happen as we get into maybe the second week of October. So I'm watching that time frame um, for things like a crazy storm system, our first frost and freeze behind this cold front, and just something weird to happen. So I'm not going to talk this to death. This could turn around and, and go away. Um, we'll talk more on it when we are a little bit more confident on it, but there's no confident on it, confidence on it right now. I just wanted to kind of take my shot on it and uh, so I can hold myself accountable if it happens or it doesn't so it can be a learning lesson for me. But we're watching this. That's all I got, guys. God bless all y'all. Have a great night, and I'll talk to you in the morning.